It says, give one example each of an intensive and extensive property. Okay, so we have to know what is an intensive and what is an extensive property. All right. First of all, it's a property, so we're talking about um, a descriptive uh, aspect of some substance. And extensive means it depends on the sample that we have, whereas intensive is going to be the same regardless of what sample. As long as we're looking at the same uh, substance, an intensive property is going to be the same. So we can just say, uh, I mean, there are any number of possible answers for this, but I'm going to say density. Okay, density, uh, we, we looked at the example of mercury in class. The density of mercury is the same regardless of what sample of mercury you have. Okay, its mass divided by its volume is always going to be the same. However, uh, the weight of a sample, okay, again, any number of right answers here, but the weight of a sample would be dependent on that specific sample. You could have a heavy sample or you could have a light sample, all right? So um, that's going to be an extensive property. All right, circle the letter of the answer that assigns the correct combination to the following statement. All right. Um, and I think the, the best way to approach this is just to look at the possibilities and see which one fits. So we're going to say an atom of a compound is composed of molecules of more than one element. Well, an atom of a compound, um, and then that's kind of, I don't know, and then is composed of molecules and atom is not composed of molecules so that that doesn't work okay so a compound of an atom hmm, that right off the bat doesn't fit um, but uh, is composed of elements of more than one molecule hmm, no it, it doesn't work all right a molecule of a compound is composed of atoms of more than one element okay that uh, that makes sense let's go ahead and look at the other two to verify that uh, C would be the best answer a molecule of an element hmm, right off the bat that doesn't quite sound very good because elements you'd have atoms not molecules okay a molecule of an element is composed of atoms of more than one compound? Mm, no, an element would only have one type of atom, so that doesn't work. And an element of a molecule is composed of compounds of more than one atom? Mm, no, that doesn't work either. So C is uh, the best answer, and uh, certainly a molecule of a compound, okay, compounds are made from molecules, that's the smallest part of a compound, um, is composed of atoms of more than one element, okay, atoms are the smallest part of elements, molecules of compounds, and a molecule has more than one atom in it, okay, uh, more than one element in a compound, all right, so that, uh, is the best answer there. All right, now here we are asking how many elements and atoms are represented in each of the following formulas. Okay, how many elements and atoms? So elements, we have carbon and oxygen, so that is two. The atoms, there's one carbon and two oxygen, so that's three, okay? Nothing uh, fancy here. Uh, Rb is rubidium, and Br is bromine. So there's two elements and two atoms, one of each. All right. Uh, here we have Na is sodium and carbon and oxygen, three elements. And we have two atoms of sodium, 
one atom of carbon and three atoms of oxygen. So three, four, five, six atoms total. And here we have uh, the element calcium, sulfur, and oxygen. So three elements, one atom of calcium, one atom of sulfur, four atoms of oxygen. So four, five, six atoms of each. All right. Um, as long as you have your understanding of elements and atoms clear, then uh, that is really not a difficult problem at all. All right. Now for uh, the uh, questions 8 to 10, we're going to reference this periodic table outline here. And uh, first, we're going to identify each of the labeled groups of elements by their name. Okay, so here are the labels. Um, first one, this is just recall, we have the uh, alkali metals. And then uh, next, we have the alkaline earth metals. And C, uh, here we have the transition metals. E, um, I, I'm not asking you to name group D um, because it isn't important. <laughs> and E is, uh, these are the halogens. F are the noble gases. And G are the rare earth. Uh, it has two different names, sometimes uh, called the rare earth uh, metals. Or equally acceptable would be the inner transition metals. Uh, next, it says on the outline shown above, draw a line approximately dividing metals from nonmetals. Okay, so the division between the metals, uh, which comprises the bulk of the periodic table, and the nonmetals is somewhere in this region, and it doesn't have to be, you know, exactly perfect, just something along those lines is really all that is necessary. Okay, um, and then we have a few questions here. The elements on the right of the line are, well, the right of the line, those are the nonmetals. Okay. Elements on the left of the line are the metals. And the elements on the line, those are the metalloids. Okay. Um, next, it says, using the labels given in the outline above, which labels represent elements that all share simil similar chemical properties? Okay. So, which elements um, all the, rather, which labels um, represent elements that all share the same uh, or similar chemical properties, okay? So, in other words, the elements in group A, or this uh, grouping as it's labeled here, do they all share similar properties? The B all share similar properties? C, okay? So, we have to remember which uh, which groups have similar properties? How are they grouped? Okay, and in fact, they're grouped vertically. All right, similar properties, elements with similar properties will fall on top of each other. Okay, not side to side. So that means uh, what we're looking for are those groups that have only one 
column. So that would include A, B, E, and F. The ones that have groups, or rather have elements from multiple columns, uh, multiple groups or families as they're called, um, those would not all have similar chemical properties. Okay, so uh, C, D, and G would not all um, have chemical similar chemical properties, but uh, A, B, E, and F that uh, is the one uh, that that they all do have uh, similar properties within each group.